make you do anything. Tell you what, I got a proposition for you. I used the movie Key Largo brought together a remarkable cast, each actor chosen with care. Humphrey Bogart, no stranger to intense roles, was a natural fit for the lead. His chemistry with Lauren Bacall, who played his love interest, was already proven in their previous films together. Lauren Bacall, a rising star, was selected for her unique blend of beauty and talent. Her distinctive voice and confident screen presence made her an ideal choice. The directors were keen to capitalize on the couple's real-life chemistry, which translated seamlessly onto the screen. Edward G. Robinson, a seasoned actor, was chosen for his ability to portray complex characters. Known for his gangster roles, he took on the challenge of playing a different kind of villain, showcasing his versatility. The rest of the cast was assembled with equal care. Claire Trevor, an experienced actress, was cast as Gay Dawn, a former singer, and Robinson's character's girlfriend. Her poignant performance in a pivotal scene earned her an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Lionel Barrymore, a Hollywood legend, was cast as the hotel owner. Despite his physical limitations due to arthritis, he delivered his lines from a wheelchair, adding depth to his character. The casting process was a careful blend of considering each actor's previous work, their chemistry with others, and their ability to bring depth to their characters. The result was a cast that elevated Key Largo to classic status. Curly. In 1948, director John Huston brought to life the classic film Key Largo. Houston's directorial vision was deeply rooted in his personal experiences and political beliefs, which greatly influenced the story's exploration of morality and human nature. Known for his distinctive style, Houston often used locations shooting to create a sense of realism, and this film was no exception. The sweltering heat and looming storms of the Florida Keys became a character in itself, enhancing the tension and claustrophobia felt by the film's characters. Houston's approach to storytelling was deeply atmospheric, using the environment to reflect the emotional states of the characters. Collaborating closely with his cast and crew, Houston created an atmosphere of creative freedom and experimentation on set. He encouraged his actors to explore their characters' motivations and emotions, resulting in powerful and memorable performances. Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, and Edward G. Robinson all delivered standout performances in this classic film noir. Houston's direction was also informed by his interest in literature and the human condition. He drew inspiration from a variety of sources, including the works of William Shakespeare and the novels of Ernest Hemingway. This intellectual curiosity and appreciation for the arts is evident in the film's complex themes and nuanced character development. In Key Largo, Houston brought together his unique creative influences and directorial style to create a film that continues to resonate with audiences today. His approach to storytelling, characterized by its atmospheric intensity and intellectual depth, has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. What have I gone and done? Key Largo is a classic film from 1948 that many people hold dear in their memories. Maybe you have a favorite scene or a personal connection to this movie. This film has a mix of funny, shocking, and sad moments that make it truly memorable. There's a lot more to discover about Key Largo, so keep watching. As for me, I have a soft spot for the film's unique blend of drama, suspense, and humor. A particular scene that has always stayed with me is when the characters are huddled together during a storm, revealing their true selves. Now we'd love to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Key Largo? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Stay to wait, directing our fire. Most of that time I was on the other end of the line. In the production of Key Largo, the set design played a significant role. The movie is largely set in a hotel during a hurricane, so the art department had to create a convincing interior for the hotel lobby and rooms. They used detailed props and realistic set pieces to make the space feel authentic. The exterior of the hotel was filmed at a real location in the Florida Keys, adding to the film's sense of place. The filming of Key Largo also presented some logistical challenges. The cast and crew had to deal with the unpredictable weather of the Florida Keys, including a real hurricane that hit during filming. They had to adjust their schedule and find ways to keep filming safely during the storm. Despite these challenges, the production of Key Largo was marked by some innovative techniques. The film used rear projection to create the effect of characters looking out at the storm, a technology that was still relatively new at the time. 
This allowed the filmmakers to create a more convincing and immersive environment for the audience. In addition, the film's director, John Huston, was known for his collaborative approach to filmmaking. He worked closely with the cast and crew to create a cohesive and effective vision for the film. This approach helped to ensure that the production of Key Largo ran smoothly, despite the many challenges that arose during filming. A whole lot. The way you look and talk and the things George wrote me. Most... In the 1948 film, Key Largo, a group of individuals find themselves trapped in a hotel during a hurricane. The movie features a talented cast, including Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, and Edward G. Robinson. The story revolves around Frank McCloud, played by Bogart, who visits the hotel owned by the family of a deceased war buddy. There, he encounters a gangster, Johnny Rocco, portrayed by Robinson, who takes over the hotel with his cohorts. Bacall plays the role of the hotel owner's daughter, who becomes involved with McCloud. Throughout the movie, the characters' interactions and the intense hurricane scenes create a tense and suspenseful atmosphere. The film also touches on themes of morality, loyalty, and the human spirit's resilience in the face of adversity. Directed by John Huston, Key Largo received positive reviews and was a box office success. The movie is often regarded as one of the best films of its time, showcasing the talents of its cast and crew. Today, Key Largo remains a classic in American cinema appreciated for its gripping storyline, strong performances, and thought-provoking themes. Go drink. Can I? In the late 1940s, composer Max Steiner was tasked with creating the musical score for Key Largo, a crime drama set in a hurricane-threatened hotel. Known for his work on films like Gone with the Wind and King Kong, Steiner brought a wealth of experience to the project. Steiner chose to incorporate tropical sounds into the score, mirroring the Florida Keys setting. He used instruments like marimbas, steel drums, and xylophones to evoke the island atmosphere. This choice added depth and authenticity to the film's environment, immersing viewers in its world. The score also served to heighten the tension and suspense throughout the movie. During scenes of rising conflict between the main characters, and the gangsters holed up in the hotel, Steiner employed dissonant chords and sharp brass notes. These choices created a sense of unease and foreboding, perfectly capturing the volatile emotions simmering beneath the surface. For the soundtrack, producer Johnny Green selected songs that aligned with the story's themes of love, loss, and redemption. One standout track is How Little We Know, performed by Frank Sinatra and Claire Trevor. Its wistful lyrics and melancholic melody resonated with audiences, becoming a hit single upon the film's release. Interestingly, some sources claim that Humphrey Bogart himself sang along to Monin Low during a key scene where he serenades Lauren Bucall. Although unconfirmed, this anecdote underscores the collaborative spirit behind the production of Key Largo. Overall, both the score and soundtrack played crucial roles in shaping the narrative and emotional tone of Key Largo. By combining atmospheric instrumentals with poignant ballads, they enhanced the viewer's experience and left a lasting impression. Rest my neck, my boat, and the shipman, and you won't come out in the rain. Well, you listen to me. Either you show tonight or the deal is off. In the making of the classic film, Key Largo, director John Huston employed a tactic that added authenticity to a crucial scene. Lead actress Claire Trevor, who played Gay Dawn, was kept unaware of her impending solo performance of the song Monin Low until the actual day of shooting. As a non-singer, Trevor found herself anxious and underprepared, singing nervously before the A-list cast. This intentional move by Houston resulted in a raw, tense portrayal fitting for the scene. One notable member of the ensemble, Edward G. Robinson, encountered real-life parallels to his character, Johnny Rocco, shortly after the film's release. Accused of ties to communist organizations, Robinson faced investigation by the House Committee on Un-American Activities despite having been a registered Democrat since the 1930s. His possession of an autographed copy of Leon Trotsky's biography further fueled speculation during the Red Scare era. Though ultimately cooperative, appearing as a friendly witness, Robinson experienced backlash, leading to graylisting in subsequent years. Before its cinematic adaptation, Key Largo initially debuted as a stage production at New York City's Ethel Barrymore Theater. Interestingly, esteemed actor Lionel Barrymore's younger sibling, Ethel Barrymore, lent her namesake theater for the original run of the story. Despite these intriguing connections, the focus remains on the compelling tale presented through both the play and the iconic film version. Johnny. No. 
Would you promise? In Key Largo, one of the most memorable scenes takes place when Edward G. Robinson's character, Johnny Rocco, forces Claire Trevor's gay Don to perform Moan and Low for entertainment. This scene displays remarkable tension and depth, demonstrating the director's skillful touch and exceptional performances by the lead actors. Director John Hustonis's low-key lighting throughout the film, casting dramatic shadows and enhancing the mood of each sequence. As Gay Dawn performs her song, dimly lit close-ups emphasize her desperation while capturing every nuance of Trevor's heart-rending portrayal. Cinematographer Carl Freund masterfully composes these shots, drawing viewers into the claustrophobic setting and intensifying the emotional stakes. Edward G. Robinson shines as the menacing gangster, dominating the screen through sheer presence alone. His subtle gestures and cold glares heighten the fear he instills in those around him. Meanwhile, Claire Trevor delivers an unforgettable raw performance filled with both vulnerability and defiance, ultimately earning herself a Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her work in the film. This powerful scene serves to humanize two otherwise ruthless criminals, providing insight into their damaged psyches while revealing hidden layers beneath their tough exterior facades. According to Houston himself, it was essential to expose their weaknesses so audiences could see them as real people. Robinson echoed this sentiment, stating, the complexity of playing a man like Rocco lies in showing his humanity amidst all the violence and greed. Similarly, Trevor reflected on how she aimed to depict Gay Dawn's struggle between submission and rebellion, saying, I wanted to capture the essence of someone who has been broken but still holds on to hope. Through expert direction, gripping performances, innovative camera work, and thoughtful storytelling, this pivotal scene leaves a lasting impression on viewers, solidifying its status as one of cinema's most iconic moments. By exploring the darkest corners of human nature, Key Largo transcends time and genre, remaining relevant and compelling even today. Sawyer. In the making of the movie, production was moved entirely to Warner Brothers Studio. This decision was influenced by the high costs incurred during the filming of the director's previous film, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, which had on location shooting. The studio tank was utilized to film the pier scenes, with miniature boats added in the background to create depth perception. The shipboard shots at the end were also filmed in the studio tank, with fog used to conceal the artifice. The character of Johnny Rocco was inspired by the notorious gangster, Al Capone, who retired in Florida and died there due to complications from advanced syphilis a year before the film's production. Interestingly, screenwriter Richard Brooks also incorporated biographical details of another infamous gangster, Lucky Luciano, into Rocco's character. The Chicago Tribune famously quoted Johnny Rocco in a 2000 article following the Florida-centric recount battle of the presidential election. The quote, Get my boys to bring the voters out, and then count the votes over and over again till they added up right, and he was elected, encapsulates the character's manipulative and cunning nature. Or I don't think so. You. Ah. Key Largo, a 1948 film, left a significant impact on audiences and pop culture. The movie, set in a hurricane-threatened hotel, presented a tense atmosphere that kept viewers on edge. It resonated with people due to its gripping storyline and the talented cast, including Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, and Edward G. Robinson. The film tackled relevant social themes, such as the struggle against organized crime, which was a major concern in post-war America. The characters' dilemmas and the moral choices they faced mirrored the societal issues of the time. Key Largo also contributed to discussions on the role of veterans in society. The protagonist, a war veteran, grappled with his inner demons and the challenges of readjusting to civilian life. This portrayal helped raise awareness about the difficulties faced by many veterans and fostered empathy among moviegoers. Moreover, the movie's influence extended to fashion, with Lauren Bacall's character popularizing the wide-brimmed hat. This classic piece of headwear became known as the Bogart Bacall hat and remains a popular style today. In essence, Key Largo left an indelible mark on audiences and pop culture through its compelling storytelling, exploration of social issues, and influence on fashion trends. Have you been crying? Why, has somebody been mean to you? Him? In the movie Key Largo, Monty Blue took on the role of Sheriff Ben Wade, while Jay Silverheels, who later became famous as Tonto in the Lone Ranger television show, 
played an uncredited part as one of two Indian brothers on the run from the law. The following year, the two actors would cross paths again, with Monty Blue appearing in six episodes of The Lone Ranger as a sheriff or an Indian chief. In Key Largo, Edward G. Robinson and Claire Trevor played a married couple, a role they reprised in two weeks in another town in 1962. Claire Trevor also sang Moan and Low a cappella in the movie, a song popularized in the early 1930s by Libby Holman. It's worth noting that Monty Blue's career spanned over four decades, and he appeared in over 200 films. Similarly, Claire Trevor had a successful career in Hollywood, winning an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress in Key Largo. Jay Silverheels, too, made a significant contribution to television as Tonto in The Lone Ranger, a role he played for eight years. Arguing. One minute she gets sore at you and won't talk to you at all, the next she's making a pro Key Largo, the 1948 film noir directed by John Huston, received critical acclaim and audience appreciation for its tense atmosphere, compelling storyline, and powerful performances. The New York Times critic, Bosley Crowther, praised the movie for its exceptional cast and tightly constructed plot, noting that it keeps interest high from start to finish. The film's ensemble, featuring Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Buckall, Lionel Barrymore, and Edward G. Robinson, was lauded for their intense and nuanced portrayals. Audiences were captivated by the on-screen chemistry between Bogart and Buckall, who delivered some of the most memorable dialogue in film noir history according to Variety. Key Largo was also recognized for its exploration of post-war disillusionment and the impact of violence on the human psyche. The film's themes resonated with audiences and critics alike, earning it four Academy Award nominations, including Best Actor for Robinson's chilling performance as a ruthless gangster. These accolades not only highlighted the individual talents of the cast and crew, but also underscored the film's enduring influence on the genre. The movie's ability to tackle complex themes while delivering thrilling entertainment has left a lasting mark on the world of cinema. This classic film continues to be celebrated for its powerful storytelling and unforgettable characters, solidifying its place in the annals of film history. No thanks. If I believed your way, I'd want to be dead too. In Key Largo, actors Humphrey Bogart, Edward G. Robinson, and Claire Trevor shared the screen once again, after having previously worked together in The Amazing Dr. Clitterhouse nearly a decade prior. Interestingly, despite Lionel Barrymore's character defending President Franklin Roosevelt in the movie, the actor himself held strong negative feelings towards him. As for the writers, both John Huston and Richard Brooks received recognition for their work, earning a nomination for Best Written American Drama by the Writers Guild. This classic film continues to captivate audiences, even today. And that's where the crime belongs, at your door. You'll probably... In the sweltering heat of 1947, the cast and crew of Key Largo began filming this classic at the Gulfstream Hotel in Florida. Humphrey Bogart, a seasoned actor, found solace in his longtime friend and co-star, Lauren Buckall. Their on-screen chemistry was undeniable, but few knew that their real-life love story had begun during the filming of another movie, To Have and Have Not. The film's director, John Huston, was known for his unconventional methods. He insisted on filming many scenes in a real hurricane, causing discomfort and anxiety among the actors. Claire Trevor, who played Gay Dawn, reportedly spent her time between takes nursing a real hangover, as her character was an alcoholic. Edward G. Robinson, who played Johnny Rocco, was initially hesitant about his role, fearing it would typecast him as a gangster. However, he eventually embraced the challenge, delivering a powerful performance. The film's climax, a tense standoff in a hotel lobby, was a logistical nightmare. The crew had to build a set that could withstand the simulated storm, and the actors had to perform while being drenched with water. Despite these challenges, the scene became one of the most memorable in the film. Key Largo was more than just a movie, it was a testament to the dedication and resilience of its cast and crew. Despite the hardships, they managed to create a timeless classic that continues to captivate audiences today. Oh, they've been here. Not when Curly and the woman showed up first. That temple told them we were closed for the summer. In the 1948 film Key Largo, the focus is not on geographical trivia, but it's worth noting that Key West is actually the southernmost point of the continental United States, not the country as a whole. That distinction now belongs to the southern tip of the Big Island in Hawaii. The movie features Edward G. Robinson in the role of the main villain, who doesn't make his appearance until 26 minutes into the film. 
Interestingly, Robinson and his wife, Marilyn, later started the famous hamburger hamlet chain of restaurants. These details add depth to the film, making it more than just a classic piece of cinema. They provide context and insight into the lives of the actors and the time period in which it was made. And that was the same name. You certainly haven't changed one bit. Meaning what? Key Largo, released in 1948, is a classic film noir that has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. This movie, directed by John Huston, brought together a star-studded cast including Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bucall, and Edward G. Robinson. Set in a hurricane-ravaged hotel in Florida, the film explores themes of crime, morality, and survival. It was one of the first films to depict gangsters in a more realistic and less glamorous light. The intense performances and tight direction set a new standard for the genre. The movie's influence can be seen in many subsequent crime dramas. Its claustrophobic setting and intense character interactions have inspired films like Twelve Angry Men and Reservoir Dogs. The complex relationships between the characters, filled with tension and mistrust, have become a staple of the genre. Key Largo also made a significant impact on the careers of its stars. Bogart's portrayal of Frank McLeod solidified his status as a leading man, while Bucall's performance showcased her versatility as an actress. The film also marked a turning point in Houston's career, leading to more high-profile directing jobs. In addition, the film's memorable score by Max Steiner and its iconic line, Here's looking at you, kid, have become ingrained in popular culture. Key Largo is not just a film. It's a piece of history that continues to resonate with audiences today. Uh, go ahead, show them how you're not afraid of dying. Shoot! In the 1948 film, Key Largo, a train was also stranded in Key West due to severe weather conditions. The train, which usually ran between Miami and Key West, had additional cars for the Labor Day weekend to accommodate the anticipated increase in passengers. Unfortunately, the conductor decided not to risk the return journey as conditions were deemed too dangerous. The movie features a yacht named Santana, which belonged to several Hollywood stars before Humphrey Bogart purchased it from June Allison and Dick Powell. Bogart loved the yacht so much that he named his production company after it. The talented cast of Key Largo includes three Academy Award winners Humphrey Bogart, Lionel Barrymore, and Claire Trevor, who won an Oscar for her role in this film. Two other nominees, Lauren Bucall and Thomas Gomez, were also part of the ensemble. Interestingly, Bucall had not received an Oscar nomination before this movie. This classic film boasts an impressive cast, with several of them being Academy Award winners or nominees, adding depth and credibility to the storyline. The film's connection to a real-life event and the history of the yacht featured in it further enriches the viewing experience. See you again, Frank. Yeah, the storm. Passing. Will we? Did you know that Key Largo was released over 70 years ago? This classic film has left a lasting impact on many cinema lovers. We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this movie. Perhaps you were captivated by the intense performance of Humphrey Bogart. Or maybe the gripping storyline left a lasting impression on you. Whatever it may be, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Did this movie influence your perspective on cinema in any way? Maybe it inspired you to explore more film noir classics, or even sparked an interest in acting. We encourage you to share your stories with us and our community. Your engagement through likes, shares, and subscriptions helps us to continue exploring cinematic treasures together. So, don't be shy. Tell us about the first time you saw Key Largo, who your favorite character was, or how this movie has stayed with you all these years. We can't wait to hear from you.